Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Vivs here from Slider. In this video, I would like to talk about the iOS app delegate lifecycle in a little more detail than what I did in my previous video. Before we start, there are two things that I would like to point out. First, if you go to Google and if you type Slidner Udemy, you will find our profile right in the first link where we are going to add all the courses on how to make apps for Android, iOS and many other platforms out there. Second, if you go to Slide Nerd, if you go to Playlist, you will find this video along with the rest of the videos right here in the iOS Swift Tutorial for Beginners Playlist. Now let's get back to our topic. So when we talk about the anatomy of an app, what are the different parts an app has? This is what you would see on the screen. This was taken from developer.apple.com. There are three main parts for now that you need to worry about. There is something called a model, something called a controller, and something a view. A model is nothing but the data in your app. Maybe it's a database. Maybe that's the cloud storage stuff that you want to get from Dropbox or Parse.com. The controller is something that controls how your app should work. In other words, when should the user see a particular screen? and what data should the user see in that screen that is why it's called a controller because it controls then there's the view that is a dummy thing or you can say it is a brainless item which is just going to show what is there on the screen in other words the screens that you build login screen sign up screen all those things are a part of the view on its own the view doesn't have any intelligence has to do something with it but the controller is the one who can add intelligence to the view for example if the password is inc incorrect all those things are verified by the controller so let's take a look at how an app actually starts in ios you have the app icon on your screen on your iphone or ipad you click on that the main method is called in the first place it's going to call one more method called the ui application main and you're, it's going to create an object of UI application. Now, if you remember, you have a file called appdelegate.swift right there in your Xcode in the left first app project navigator. Now, inside that file, there are several methods and those methods are going to be triggered at the appropriate times by this UI application. In other words, both of them communicate closely with each other. There's an info plist file in your app somewhere if you have noticed it this file contains data like hey should your app run only on portrait should it run on landscape towards the right or landscape towards the left upside down should it have custom fonts all that configuration information goes right here if you're familiar with some other programming language this file is very similar to your manifest file now take a look at the next step which would be run loop now run loop is the state where your app is ready to receive events. I'll get to that in a second. Let's take a look at the next step. The UI application is going to launch this method, which will be did finish launching with options to indicate that yes, your app has been launched and the application window would be created at this point, which is simply the storyboard that you designed for your app, your custom login screen or your to-do list screen or your weather app screen, whatever is that that is being launched right here and the user is going to see the app now from this point onwards whatever the user does like tapping buttons and swiping through tabs all that comes to be handled by your run loop or your run loop continuously monitors what the user does on the screen so this is the simplest launch sequence that you have for your ios let us take a closer look at the ui application class if you're not sure of what this class does Always go to Google and type UI application documentation and you should be able to find a good amount of information. It manages the event loop and other high level app behaviors for starters. Event loop is basically what the user does on the screen, which I just discussed in the previous slide. Then talking about transitions like incoming post notifications or stuff like that, it is going to notify your app delegate when such events happen. Now don't subclass this. That is what Apple's documentation says out there. The UI application main is called immediately when the app is launched. And there should be only one UI application in your app. You can access that through the shared application method, which would be a class level or static method in other terms where you can access the object of UI application. So let's have a final look now at the app delegate.swift file. You see this file every time, right? So what is that file about? It is basically a custom object that is created or used by you 
at launch time thanks to the ui application main function the main purpose is to handle transition between states of your app now what do i mean by states of your app let's take a look at that the app can be not running in active active background and suspended now these are the five states of your app and this is what they would look like initially the app is not running when the person starts the app for a second or so it's inactive then it becomes active and when the user minimizes the app or jumps to the home screen or starts another app you go into the background state and at some point when ios decides that there is not enough memory or stuff to run your app anymore it is going to suspend your app and put you back in the background so in this video we have seen what happens when you take your app on the iphone and you press on the launch icon and what are the different steps that are triggered after that in the next video we are going to talk about the different parts involved in the ios lifecycle in a little more detail in the meantime go to google and type slide nerd udemy and check our social accounts on slide nerd twitter and slide nerd facebook all the code is going to be found if you go to google and type slide note github thanks for watching i'll catch you guys later have a nice day